given us a word to hold our hearts. The theme of this passage of scripture that's read for your hearing just a few moments ago is God chosen one. God chosen one. You see, the saints of God, each and every one of us are chosen by God. God preordained our presence for this moment at his hour for this day. God already knew where you're going to be at when you were born, at your youth, at your latter age, and at your age of wisdom. God already know where you're going to be. It just, he already set the stage, predestinated for you. All you have to do is stay in that right, stay on that path that God already set for you. Amen? But what did God mean by what day? Can someone tell? Well, I'm going to tell it for you. You see, God word ordained means predestined. It means faith had ordained the meaning. The meaning. It means to order by the command of God's word. Thus do the God ordained. That's exactly what it means. Amen. It is a, it's a predestined. It is the predetermined. So God already preordained what's going to happen in your life. All you have to do is make a decision if you want to stick by it. Amen? Amen. The word of God let us know, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. The Bible first made it clear that Christ loved us, and we are to continue in his love. What is love, brothers and sisters? Well, I'm glad you are. It means agape love, which is also means unconditional love. You see, God's love is unconditional. It's not one of those conditions like, well, I love you if you love me. I love you if you do this for me. I love you if you buy me your ring. I love you if you marry me. It's not those kind of conditions. His condition is unconditional. Amen. Verse 10 let us know, if you keep my commandment, ye shall abide in what? My love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. What is our Bible talking about? Is if you love God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, you will obey God's commandment. The same commandment God has for all humanity. You're going to do it because you love him. Hey, Amen. See, verse 11 tells us, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is a commandment that ye love one another as I love you. Now, this kind of love is not the same as God love. We're talking about, we're talking about two types of love here. We're talking about a God love which is unconditioned but in the Greek, in this passage of scripture, verse 12, talks about the philot love. It means friendship, the affection of love. It means loyalty. Amen. How many of you have friends that you truly care about? How many of you, in a, if the situation presents itself, would give your life for a friend? How many of you would go that extra effort to help? Verse 13 let us know, 
joy in your heart. This kind of love through friendship is represented in verse 10 and 13. You got to love enough to help a stranger, amen? You got to love enough to help someone in need. You got to love enough to help someone to do the right thing and go in the right direction, even if they disagree with you. That's love. If you see someone about to commit suicide, are you going to stand there and say, well, I ain't got nothing to do. I don't want to offend you. That's my friend. That's not being a friend, brothers and sisters. A friend will say, despite how the individual feel about you afterwards, especially when you sell us some truth. One of the hardest things I've seen in my lifetime is a friend to do is to tell a friend that he's wrong. And told me there's some things I just know about you that ain't right. You just not yourself. Something ain't right. What you doing? Why you do that? Make that decision. I'll tell you, my wife is my best friend. I'll tell you what. But she get on me every time. Every time. Let me make one decision that is not a right of God. She will let me know. If I speak something that's not in accordance with God's will, she'll let me know. That's a friend. Amen. We gotta stop this politically correct thinking saying that we don't want to offend people. Because being a Christian, a follower of Christ, you already offended a lot of people. Period. So why play political correctness now? Christ didn't play political correctness. He died on the cross for you. He was hated by the, by those who are supposed to be people of God. He was hated by the scribe, Pharisee, theologians of that day. And so what makes it going to be indifferent for you? You got to love enough to share what you come to understand, whether it be of God's work or be what is the natural. If it doesn't mean right, don't do it. Not too many people saying, if, I, if wrong is right, I want to be wrong. If love and you is that old song, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to be right. No, you better be right. You better. Because if a friend or a soulmate won't tell you nothing, what makes you 
anything they're going to do to you behind your back. And I see so many so-called friends hurt our brothers and sisters. Hurt you. Maybe you have hurt somebody at one point in your life. And you have repented. And if you have not repented, do so. Amen. You see, a true friend knows everything about you in life first. And it's like an extended family when you take on a friend. Because their children know about you, their family knows about you. You're an extended member now. Well, I believe, also believe that the church of God is an institution of friends. It's an extended family. Just like our church right here. A believers, an extended family of believers that love one another. This love is unconditional. This love is affectionate and loyalty. Christ commanded us to love one another. Amen. He predestined us to love and trust also, trust Him alone. How many of you trust Jesus Christ? How many of you love Christ enough to love your neighbor as yourself? That's love. That's friendship. That's boy. Verse 16 says, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye shall go and bring forth fruit, and your fruit shall remain, and that would say, Ever you shall ask them, the Father in my name. Keep on. He may give it. See, the wonderful thing, brothers and sisters, about this scripture is that Christ has chosen you. Or I should say, us. He has chosen us. But we didn't choose him. Follow me with this. Christ chose us in the time we were created. Christ chose us before we even were born. Christ chose each and every one of us while we were still out there in the world. It was just a matter of time when we get our head back together and come back again. You see, our life is not our life anymore when we come to Christ. But Christ, because he paid the ultimate price. He loved us even when we don't love him. He predestined our path not for us, but part of his plan. And our plan is not of his plan. We can make all the plans we want. I want to go to the best schools, get the best job, I'm going to get the best looking house, I'm going to get... That's made out of his plan. And your life will be changed over to a path of poverty, humility, and chastity. So remember, it's not about you. Because Christ will win every time. Some of us were baptized as infants. And others were baptized at a later age. But it doesn't mean that God doesn't hold us accountable. He still holds us accountable for our behavior in our life as we grow old. All of us will make mistakes, poor decisions. And some will look to the second world and allow it to take over us. When our life becomes a life of darkness and a total separation of God good, and His goodness and grace, we will face confusion, pain, living a lifestyle of death, and may even consider suicide or a life of murder and crime. But God from the past. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Calling on the name of the Lord for, to forgive us, to forgive you for your sins. And to help you and us to come back to where we lost our first love. And then one day, a great awakening has occurred. You woke up in a cold sweat for you know that God has spoken.
spoken to you the night before. And you heard a voice in the air say, because of the prayers of the saints, your sins are forgiven. Choose this day who you shall serve. For I have already chosen. And from that moment on, you chose Christ and repented from your sin. Then you ask God to change your life well. Your life is no longer a lifestyle of death, of immorality, excuses, or personal discretion. Now you have experienced a new life, no longer of death, but a life within Christ. In giving, he gave you the agape one unconditionally. He gave you the love of the life, meaning love between you and a friend. And peace through Jesus Christ. Like the people of Israel, God has already chosen them. And he chose us for this very day and our very, this very moment. Why? For us to do great works in the kingdom of God. To be disciples. To be out there witnessing the good news for the kingdom of God. Some of you, brothers and sisters, right here or online, are facing a great separation from God. You have turned away from the church and turned. I'm not talking about those who are present here, but I'm talking about those who may be in spirit or maybe online or maybe you're not here, and you may know somebody who has turned from God. And turned from a lifestyle of life and love and peace to a lifestyle of death, to a lifestyle of ungodly relationships, to a facing abuse, drugs, addiction, overindulgence of alcohol, and say to themselves, where is God now? Well, my friends, the good news is God never left you. He is with you right now. He is with you during the time you were drinking with the people who don't love you. He is with you when you, who those people who are not your friends. He is with you when you lost your job. He is still with you even when you gave your life to a lifestyle opposite of him. He never leave you nor forsake you. But all you have to do, brothers and sisters, is repent. Repent and give your life to him. In total surrender, give yourself to God. All you have to do is come to the waters. There's a song that, that comes to mind. And that is come to the waters and stand by my side. Drink from the south mountain and you won't be denied. He would wipe all those teardrops that fall from
good works of the gospel. Keep God in your heart and remember, share the love of Jesus Christ to someone today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us prepare for our dismissal.